It's the state's oldest human service nonprofit, dating back to 1893. Now, Children's Home Society is taking steps on both sides of the state to position itself for the future. Leading that effort is CEO Michelle Lavallee, a longtime executive taking on what she calls her most rewarding role yet. Well, let's start with a little news, if we can, because we are sitting in the future Children's Inn, which is not going to be called the Children's Inn. That's exactly right. This is the large conference room, um, what is called now Children's Home Shelter for Family Safety, formerly Children. Children's Inn. Children's Home Shelter for, for Family, family safety. safety. And we did research, market research, to really ask people, do you know what Children's Inn is and what they do? Turned out, people still think it's a daycare center or it's a hotel for kids. Every day we get calls like that. Mm. And really after nearly 40 years, we decided it was time to bring it back under the Children's Home brand. The Children's Home Society brand is a broad one that LaValle has worked to define. We started with real strategic planning, which I'm a nut about, right? And really focused on what are we in business to do? And we boiled it down to trauma. We, pr we prevent trauma. We treat trauma and we heal trauma. And that sort of gave us the organizing principle because every one of our seven really programs or service line deals with folks that have had some trauma or preventing trauma. Children's Home Shelter for Family Safety is an obvious example. Here, survivors of domestic violence can receive not just shelter, but stability. And there's a growing need for it. So if we moved in today, this new 96 bed facility would be two thirds full. For the past 155 days, we've been in the 50s and 60s for a 40 bed capacity. We don't ever turn anybody away. That means people turn their offices into bedrooms. That means the living rooms become sleeping areas for the kids and the moms. So this is really needed in our region. This role gives you a lot of perspective about what's happening in the community that many of us don't see, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, with this wonderful growth we have in the Sioux Falls area, unfortunately, with good things also comes the challenges and social services agencies like ours have to pick up on it. So people say a 96 bed shelter, I mean, that is huge in the world of shelters. Usually they're run by zealots who are out there fundraising for every penny to keep it open. It's unusual that a domestic violence shelter would be under a pretty large organization like ours. We're almost a $30 million budget and 130 years old and have a tremendous brand. And so, uh, the hard part, Jody, is we have to fundraise for 70% of the $4.6 million budget every year. And this is just one of the Children's Home Society programs. Others cover everything from foster care and adoption to Bright Start, a nurse visitation program that supports first-time mothers and their babies from pregnancy through the child's second birthday. When a nurse comes to your house, guess what? It's a lot more about, more than about your health and baby's health. They help you set up your life, jobs, all the things that you need. And so that is our, I'm so proud of that prevention mm -hmm. program. Um, and now we've expanded it. We are all the way up to Brookings and all the way down to Yankton. Oh, it's a great program. I didn't know I much know. about this program at all until we started telling stories with Absolutely. you about Children's Home. I bet you didn't know too No, much about and it I don't think anybody does. Mm -hmm. And so when you say it's hard to boil down to an elevator speech, it's true because we deal with our biggest program is residential treatment. So kiddos that have been abused or neglected will stay with us for about 18 months in a residential setting, year round school. We have um, 62 here and um, 36 in the hills, in the Black Hills. And then we also run a day, day school program where about 30 kids come in and their school district drops them off and they go to school with us because they're struggling in school. So there are kiddos that are with us that come from loving families, but whatever's going on with the kiddo is too much for the family to take. It's a lot to lead. So I want to talk a bit about how you got here. Yeah. Um, this is very much the capstone of a super interesting career. So let's go way back because the, the story of Michelle growing up in South Dakota <laughs> is one that must be told. <laughs> and I, many people know it, but others, yeah, I, I am sure like on the they see you trail. today and they would never, <laughs> never guess, right? I know. I grew, up. I grew up as a cowgirl and uh, riding horses and working at, at the sail barn. I was a sail barn brat one of seven kids and uh, had a wonderful, wonderful childhood. But you know, we were 
we were part of the crew rounding up cattle and working cattle. And if you weren't doing that, you were in the chuck wagon doing dishes or waiting on tables. So wonderful work ethic. But I, I moved from South Dakota when I was 17. And so um, you were ready to get out. I mean, wonderful or not, you were true. ready to, to do other things. I always knew that I was going to have a bigger life. And I did. <laughs> It took her to USD, where she left after her freshman year for a banking role in Colorado. I was the youngest officer by the time I was 23 years old. I was a bank officer and hadn't finished school. So and college essentially was done in Colorado to start. You learned by experience. Yes, exactly, and exactly. And then we ended up moving. We huh. started, um, my husband was in um, healthcare, okay. and so we moved. 14 times, actually. Wow. We have moved a lot, and but mostly for his job. It's shown right? you a lot, too. It I really did. All over the country. Absolutely. But when we got to Chicago, I decided to go back to school, and I went to Northwestern, our alma mater. Our all shared and alma mater, which you're repping beautifully. I know, with way. this. And yeah. yeah. I'm, you have some purple clothes, I've got too. a little work to do, but yes. <laughs> And, but again, I mean, I don't know how old you were when you went back to college, but uh, clearly what we'd call a non-traditional oh, student. Oh, completely. Again, a bold move. What was that like? I mean, you're on, were oh, you on yeah. campus? Obviously, oh, yeah. you were there for school. Did, Absolutely. You I lived there. But... I lived in the suburbs in Lake Forest sure. and drove to Evanston every day. And of course, you know, I was with the day program at Northwestern University is very traditional. And, you know, took French classes. And actually, it was wonderful. There was a couple of other non-trads, but I got to know everybody and the professors as well. And I'd have them out to my house. It was like they were going like right to their older sisters right. or maybe not quite their parents' house, right. but no. um, it was a wonderful education. She went on to earn her MBA at Northwestern while at the same time beginning to grow her career in South Dakota. I came home from my 20 year class reunion. Really? And I met the CEO of Northwestern Energy. He was my sister's neighbor. It and was headquartered in Huron. Huron. I was going to say this was oh, Huron yes, High School. Huron. Okay. And literally your class reunion. Had that's you thought about coming back? A little. Okay. I was, you know, my husband had just sold a company, and I thought, now where are we going to go? Mm -hmm. Like, where? Where next? I was actually tired of moving, and I felt that tug to have some stability and have my uh, still a couple siblings, my folks, mm -hmm. and so um, to come back to my hometown, I never thought was a possibility, and I never thought my husband would do it. Right. But he loves South Dakota. The move led to marketing leadership roles in multiple industries. Lavallee led an effort to rebrand the University of South Dakota before spending six years in leadership for marketing, innovation, and strategy at Avera McKinnon. You are not afraid to take on change. This is what this tells me. There's oh. Some people just, they would rather do anything else. And, and I feel Isn't like you, true? throughout your whole career, you kind of run toward that. It, you know what? Why do you think that is? I have that. That's the good and the bad of me. <laughs> I love to go in and make the changes and make complete order out of chaos, right? And it is a personality trait, I think, right? So um, I'm happy to stay as long as there's new challenges, right? Same at Avera. I got recruited from USD to go to Avera. And that completely was when changing industries, completely I don't changing know that you've industries. Had much exposure to healthcare, man, you no, touched so many things here. My husband did, but sure. I really think you can go in and I mean, I did deep dive at university and then a deep dive in healthcare, which I profoundly loved. But you know, there was 236 different identities there too, and you know, they had all their historical names that had to come under one brand, and that was a process. But healthcare is one of the most compli complicated industries. They say healthcare and Airlines. I haven't done that one yet. No. You might want to, I don't know. I feel like you're in a good spot now. Maybe be careful how much more you want to take on, right? Oh my gosh. Challenging well, challenging times. And but. actually, this, this job is probably a, a great capstone for me because it really does combine education and healthcare and mission. I realize I am so much better in a mission based organization. When LaValle joined Children's Home in September of 2019, the organization was dealing with some trauma of its own. Six months prior, nine-year-old Serenity Denard had run away, the first time in the organization's 130-year history that a child had been lost. Following what many consider the largest search in state history throughout the Black Hills, she has still never been found. And that profoundly changed um, how people felt and I think people still think about it. So that was a time to move the organization through that. Uh, and then COVID hit and boy, 
did our life change. I mean, we had to do a complete lockdown, meaning the kids didn't leave campus and family members couldn't come to campus. Not their own family, not the foster family. In addition to an entirely new leadership team, LaValle has focused personally on recruiting and retaining from entry level up. When I came, I think half of the staff was at less than $14 an hour. I don't know if you remember the first piece you and I did together was a piece about our staff and what we're doing to attract staff and maintain, because our turnover was pretty tough. It was in the 70s. Well, guess what? We went from $14 an hour to 17 to 20 as of July 1. And actually, the average person there that starts is making almost $22 an hour. Wow. And I'm proud to say that before COVID, I interviewed 300 of our 330 employees to personally. really and personally to understand what were their pain points? What was, why was their turnover? What was their lives, lives like? And I mean, it was student loans that was so challenging for this, I mean, because they're in their 20s. So we came up with an idea to help pay their student loans directly to their student loan company. So now we pay uh, $2,600 a year directly to the student loan, which is tax-free. It's like getting a really nice little raise there. And of the 96 people in the program, they've been in it for the last two years and have not left. So I think that's a secret retention tool, to tell you the truth. But the job market is very, very tough, very, very tough. So we have some beds closed right now because even at that price, even at that pay, even with those benefits, um, total rewards, we have just bumped everything up that we could. Um, it's still really hard to keep staff. So when you get in your late 20s, you start a family, the hours are tough. So now we're looking at how can we change the schedules around. So there's work-life balance is a real thing since COVID. It hasn't been for me. <laughs> well, it's interesting because as you talk yeah. about being a boss, I, my head just went to mentoring and you have mentored so many oh, professionals yes. in this community, particularly young women. Young women. Um, are, mm -hmm. are there any themes that have come up in those relationships where you've just feel like, like you know, there are these issues out there or ways that you've been able yeah. to make an impact for them? You know, it's funny. I think I've had eight or nine officially through the MB program. And one theme that's clear is they want to do, they, they're struggling on how to get to the next job. To break out, all of them seemed like they were ready to do the next thing. Mm -hmm. And I am so proud of them. They have gone on to do amazing jobs and to be leaders themselves. So I think the theme for them is, maybe it's my change process, is to not be afraid of change. Go for it. What's my famous thing? How hard can it be? What's the worst that can happen? Let's give it a go. So I think one thing that I do well is give people the confidence that they can accomplish and do the next thing in their life. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. Do you yeah. feel like, have you seen this business community evolve in the time that you have been here when it comes to being more open-minded to giving people like that opportunities? Oh, I think so. Remember how we used to say, hmm, where are all the female CEOs? Absolutely, we've you had and this I, conversation many for ten, times. No, for, seriously, for 10 years, mm -hmm. remember? Mm -hmm. And people, when you're choosing new board members, they'd say, well, there's no women to executives right. to choose from. Right. And we would say, well, then promote them. <laughs> yeah. And now yes. I am thrilled to see there's this whole new CEO uh, group that's popped up here, here in, uh, and in the hills. And it's in the Black Hills where LaValle is taking on her next endeavor. The organization's five-year plan calls for looking at what a future relocation could involve. The grounds are stunning on 88 acres in the middle of the Black Hills National Forest beautiful, surrounded by cliffs. I mean, from a scenic perspective and from a trauma-informed perspective, it's a wonderful place to have kiddos. But it's also a 45-minute call for the fire department or an ambulance or the police, right? Mm -hmm. And as we've looked to say, what would it take to bring this facility, you know, uh, back to just a little more contemporary, uh, the investment of nine to $12 million, we thought, oh, wow, but we still couldn't grow. So the Black Hills, I mean, this is about 20 miles outside on a pretty treacherous, curvy road, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so challenge for staff, especially in the wintertime, you, ha you have to sleep there. Wow. You have to sleep over when the roads are like that. But this day school concept that works so well in Sioux Falls, if we were in the city of Rapid City, 
they have assured us that they have kiddos that they have to send elsewhere. It would be a perfect place for us. So a growth opportunity to be closer to town. We're in the process right now of saying, should we move? Back in Sioux Falls, the new shelter is nearly ready for guests. It's intentionally designed and built to provide a calming environment, privacy and dignity. I'm just excited for so many more people to have a place to go. We built this for 2030 and beyond for capacity. And um, I can't wait when I see people's eyes when they come through to see what it's like. I, we, we had neighbors here yesterday and we said we're gonna be good neighbors. It's been hard in a neighborhood to have this construction, but they loved walking through and seeing the kind of the serenity of the, of the building. Um, so this is a big, it's a big step for, for Children's Home to do this. And we're adding, I think, 15 positions. Um, that's a big step too. That's a big step too. <laughs> for someone who likes to come in, make change, and then let's be honest, sometimes move on. Yeah. Um, I feel like you're not done here yet. Am I right? Yes, absolutely. I think we have a lot more to do here and the five-year plan's gonna dictate it. So, you know, I'm gonna be around for a while, right? This is, this is my capstone. It's my, I think it's my capstone, but. Um, it's you, so let's yeah. Who knows? <laughs> But I love it. I love it. And I, um, I love working with the board and I love the team that I put together. So um, I think we've got a lot more to do. We'd like to thank Market Beat for sponsoring the CEO series. Stay tuned for more conversations with CEOs making news throughout the year. And of course, for all your latest business news, head over to www.suefalls.business.